They like little cockles. And look at that, juicy. Okay, so I got me coconut. Now check out these little shellfish. And that's it, that's a crab trap. Oh mate, that tastes so good. This is tapioca. Two beautiful little male crabs. I didn't go hungry, I had some good feeds. You know, I've just been spooking around the edges in the shallows here, in amongst all these shells, and there's, there's another one here. There's a heap of these, look. They're like little cockles. So I've got a pocket full of them already. Got six or seven. I'll keep foraging and I'll see how many of these I can get. Now check out these little shellfish. Really good, I've been picking out them, they taste really good. A little bit of sort of gutsy stuff in there, just pull that out. But that little orange bit and a little bit of meat hanging off it, it's a good feed. Mm. Good stuff. Okay, so I got me coconut. I'm gonna start freaking hacking into this thing, mate. I'm thirsty as anything. Look at that! Look at that. Oh, yeah. A bit sour sort of, but there's a lot in there. I'll tell you what, that's good. That's real good. So whenever you see one of these wash it, washing up or floating past, swim out and get it. There's a couple more down there that I haven't got yet. There's a fair bit of coconut inside, so I'll cut this open, dry it out, chop all the coconut up, and we'll get into making some coconut cream. All right, let's get into that. I've grated that all that coconut from that coconut I found. I've topped it up with as much water as I've got. Now I haven't got much water, so. Now what I'm gonna do is just hang that up in the sun and leave it for a while. And then I'll squeeze it out. And we'll be left with the coconut milk. And then, if you leave it long enough, it'll actually separate. It's like the curds and whey. It'll separate and you can drain off the whey and just have thick coconut cream left. All right. So I got me coconut. It's been soaking in the water for, you know, half an hour, an hour or so. The dough is now, it's just to give it a good squeeze here. I'm going to save this coconut because you can eat it. So give it a good squeeze. Good to eat. A lot of coconut taste is already gone because a lot of the oils and the, that is already into the water. But you can still eat it and it's fibre. And what you're left with is this coconut milk or more. You can more or less just drink that. It's really coconutty. It's good. So what I'll do is I'll tie a rope on that and just hang it up. <coughs> and we'll wait for an hour or two. And you'll see it start starting to separate like. Now check out that coconut now, it's completely separated. You can see all the way on the bottom, all the watery. And this is the full coconut cream here, this thick bit on the top here. Now I'll show you how thick this coconut cream is on top here. This is after it's separated, look at it. How thick it is, look at that. And that's just... Oh mate. <laughs> That tastes so good, it's so creamy and thick. I could just eat that. Good nutrition. Mm. Oh mate. Sweet, beautiful coconut. Oh, that is so good. Now check out this. This is an awesome find. This is tapioca, which is like a taro. Uh, cassava they call it in a lot of countries now you can eat these leaves you pick these leaves and you just boil them like a spinach or you can fry them and there's a, a great source of nutrition all right so we're going to dig up a bit of tapioca and uh, yeah we'll cook some of that up what a great find this is awesome okay so we've got a handful of leaves we'll take that back and uh, we'll see if we can find some green bamboo or something to cook it in to steam it in or some sort of vessel we can boil it or even fry it, tapioca, great source of vegetable and there's just shitloads of it here so 
All right, let's try and dig up some tapioca. So we're going to also this big plant here we've got with the elephant ear leaves. That's taro. And if you pull that plant out, there'll be a big bulb on the bottom. It's sort of like a tapioca type thing. It's a staple in the Pacific Islands. They all eat taro. And uh, it's another good food source. Mate, you've got to be... Seriously, you won't believe this. I'm sitting here. Right, here's my shelter. I've got to be at two or three metres. And then there's water because it's all mangroves here, right? And I'm sitting here and a big mud crab just come right up here, just crawled right up here and I just run down and try to get him and he just took off into there I can guarantee that no one crabs this little section of mangroves and that's why that was a good sized crab otherwise you can make a trap out of bamboo split up bamboo like this in the thin, you know, thin slats and uh, lash yourself a little trap together but if I got one in the boat what's this? Unreal, check this out. Got a bit of a bit of old fishing net. Right, that'll come in handy. Actually, I can use that now to make a crab trap. Now I was gonna make a crab trap out of bamboo, but now I can just use this bit of fishing net and I'll show you how. Okay, so this is a great find. Found this old bit of broken fishing net it's all ripped to pieces it's in pieces and that so what I'll do is just fold it up in half a few times like that get a bit of rope tie it around the middle of it like that and that's it that's a crab trap and all you do is just hang this up in the tree somewhere stick it in the mangroves put a bit of bait up inside the net and uh yeah the crabs will just crawl into the net and get tangled it's one of the easiest type of traps i used to use these to catch yabbies in australia when i was a kid just an old bit of fishing net and a chicken carcass so i seen a couple of dead fish up the beach there little tiny little fish so i'm going to go get them use them for bait and i'm going to set it over in the mangroves where i saw that big fat mud crab anyway Hopefully by tomorrow morning, we'll have a crab. I'll just set up the trap in here. Probably here is as good a spot as any. Just tie it up here so they can't get away. And that's it. It's set. Got the bait in the middle. Just spread the trap out a bit, spread the net out a bit. And I'll just leave that there till tomorrow morning's low tide. That's the crab trap. Beautiful. Come back tomorrow morning when we we'll wake up and we'll see what happens. Oh yes, we have one too. Actually, we've got two. We've got two. I'll just untie this and I'll bring it out in the open and uh, show you what I got. Oh shit. Check out that. All right, might be a female as it's pretty small that one and there's another bigger one in there oh yeah well they're eatable size so they're going on the fire I'm starving you got to really watch yourself handling mud crabs this always works they just can't help themselves they've got that many little spikes and that on the shell and that they just get tangled in nets so easy like, look at that they're two edible ones. All right, they're going on the fire. Beautiful. Now the last thing you want to do is get bitten by one of these buggers. So we'll just cut him out. And he's just going to go straight onto the fire like that. Upside down. And yep, that's about it. We'll just leave it there for about 15, 20 minutes till he's nice and red and he's cooked. And that's dinner. Ooh. Beautiful. And he's going straight on the fire. Next to the other one. And that is going to be a hell of a feed. 
check out that yamo. And just check out the crablies. They're ready for sure. Whack them over here on the mat. Let them cool down. And look at that, two beautiful little male crabs. And that is breakfast. Give it a bit of a crack with the back of the knife. And look at that, juicy. Juicy crab, mate, mud crab. There's nothing I know, I'm just so hungry. This is gonna be the best thing I've tasted for so long. And there's something sort of primal about catching your own food in there, eh? Just makes you feel like a caveman or something, you know? And I'll tell you what. Oh, that is juicy. Mud crab, especially the mud crab nipper. It's got to be the best food in the world. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to hook into those crabs and I'll see you later. Anyway, if you like this four part series that I've just done, finding water, making shelter, making a fire and finding food, leave it in the comments what you thought about it. I've had great fun doing these videos. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and all that crap and I'll see you on the next one.